Have you ever thought just how boring or ridiculous news commentary is today? Welcome to The Real Jacks Podcast with Jim and Larry. The Real Jacks Podcast. From crime and politics to entertainment, you can expect something different. Now, let's get real, Jacks. Hey, welcome back to Real Jacks with Jim, Larry, and Crawfish. I'm not even going to say who the guest is because Larry's going to handle the introductions after he reads the sponsors. Yeah, we'll go through the ads real quick. Probably not as fast as I did earlier. That was a record, though, but we, we had a short show. Two so. minutes, man. Yeah. Well, I got it done in, what, 120-something? All right, and that's the end of the show. Thanks, yeah, and we appreciate it. Yeah, anyway, <laughs> first ad, Extreme Wings, four convenient locations, Family Sports Restaurant Grill, more than just wings. Tremendous barbecue open since 2007, 8927 Herlong Road, open 11 to 8, Tuesday through Saturday, and Sunday 11 to 3, full barbecue menu. Everything's homemade, and they cater anything. They love first responders. Advanced Window Tent, 5024 Sunbeam Road, over 26 years' experience here in Jacksonville. My buddy Ricky Tillman owns that. 3M Platinum Dealer, highest level of 3M Dealer around. They tent vehicles, homes, and businesses. Secure One Protection Services, Jim's company. Your number one choice for protection since 1986, 356-1111. Uh, Dibble Roofing, up in since 1949. You call Norm Brewer at 904-910-5728 or email norm at norm.dibbleroofing at gmail.com. D-Way Towing, our buddy Doug Dixon, 100 South Jackson Avenue. Phone number is 904-356-3929. Take care of all your towing needs. Looking for real estate agent Shannon Judge with Legends of Real Estate. Shannon Judge Real Estate at gmail.com. Our number is 904-200-8158. And lastly, Bouncer Roof Fund, Mike Kellum, former JSO and friend of mine, serving North Florida for over 15 years. They've done over 10,000 parties. Bouncer Roof offers a large selection of inflatable hoppers, water slides, interactive games, concessions, and frozen drinks. They offer large uh, event tents, tables, and chairs, and always discounts to first responders. If you rent on a weekend, you keep the equipment the whole weekend. Think about that, Larry. 10,000 parties. Yeah, that's a lot. That's a lot. If they've I was going to do that. some stuff in my house. That, Christmas parties I have, they've, that, they've, brought, they've brought me. That's the company I would yeah. call. Because you know they got the experience and they're yeah, probably going to do it yeah, right. Do, so, and he's so, a, he left JSO was running the business and, st- and now he's teaching school. He's coaching coaching school. He's I think Atlanta Coast or whatever. He's he's yeah, back, back to school. Yeah, cool. So Larry told me to shut Jim shut up yeah, during this episode. Yeah. So, but but you're going to say something. I'm going to go. Tell me about that. But um, yeah, we'll, well, you're going to ask Larry's going to do the introduction. We'll do questions and, at the end. We'll and, do yeah. questions. There you go. <laughs> yeah. If you uh, have any. We got may a, not, we'll may, have may a, we'll have a Q and A Q and A session. We've got Burt Baker in here and and James Leggett, and just so everybody knows, James is my first cousin. I've got a wide variety of first cousins and cousins <laughs> all over the north side of Jacksonville, Oceanway area, um, and and he's on the west side now. So yeah, yep. yep. So um, James is is got a wild story, uh, and he he was an older cousin to me, and you know you we can, we can kind of get into the lighthearted stuff later yeah. on. Um, well, you can show your first story. Oh, the, first, the car one? Yeah. yeah, yeah so James was always nice wild. Breaker. He always had hot rods, and he was kind of a wild, <laughs> young cat. And, uh, you know, I was I was a little church mouse, a uh, little altar boy back in back yeah. in the day. No, I was I, – at this age, I was like 13. I hadn't really hit my – Hit my gross spurt and my wild side yet, but hanging out with Jimmy Judge. Uh, yeah, you know, I had, yeah, we had probably just met Jimmy, yeah. but anyway, I was hassling the bikers, hassling, yeah. hassling yeah. bikers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> 11, 12, 13, uh, James, James is, uh, he lives off Duns Creek Road. Uh, we lived down on the north side, and and I had to get a ride for something. And uh, every time you get around James, you always made me a little nervous. I'll, I'll, I'll say that right <laughs> up front. He was just a wild kid. I don't know, were you 18 then or something? Something like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah 18, 19 then. I think he was six wild. years. Always had a hot rod truck. Was there six years between us? Five, six, five, five, five or six. He gave you a ride, and you get out of the car and go, "Man, I survived that. No, no, yeah, survived, yeah, again. <laughs> survived again. Survived again." Yeah. I remember going down Dunn's Creek sideways. Road, truck pretty much sideways, hundred yeah. miles an hour, and that's not a big road. It's not very wide. Yeah. Um, and, you know, and you're Molly Hatchet flirting with disaster, appropriately playing on the eight track tape. Um, the truck sideways. He's got a. He always, you know, he was a mechanic, and he's a diesel mechanic mm-hmm. on top of that. So he always had hot rod stuff. So, and I'm telling you, I'm begging James, please, please slow down. I mean, my <laughs> knuckles are white. I'm sweating. I'm about to cry because I'm like yeah. tw- 11, 12, and I think I'm I'm about to die. And he's just <laughs> laughing and laughing and laughing. Traumatizing you. Oh no, I was traumatized. <laughs> traumatized. I had PTSD. I promise. <laughs> Well, years go by, and I go through a whole career with JSO. I've been in some big pursuits. I've learned how to drive cars better than most people. Um, I mean, I've been 140, 150 miles an hour. Uh, so I always had that in the back of my head. Well, this instance popped up, so James was gone for a while. Uh, James came back, and my cousin Steve Leggett, who's uh, his uncle, the Max Leggett Parkway, that's his dad. It's our uncle. 
uh, he was he had his property out there off of Sterrett Road, and he was doing like a family function. He had a bunch of his friends yeah. over there, and they were cooking stuff. He had oysters or whatever cooking. And, and James, uh, he was always – he liked the old FHP cars. So he was always collecting so They were fast. Yeah, yeah. So he had one, and he, he said, hey, you, you like this car? And he showed this, you know, he's silver, and he's done some work to it, and I could see he's put some effort into it. And I was like, yeah, I do. He goes, you, uh, you want to you go drive it? And bam. That instance popped in my head when he scared the mess out of me. I said, yeah, you know unbeknown to me, he was, yeah. uh, he oh, was yeah. after payback. Yeah. What, what year is this? Yeah. This is only, how long ago was this? Uh, 2003. Oh, recent. Oh, so he, oh, yeah. he's already yeah. been a trained oh, yeah. police oh, yeah. officer oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. And, and knew how to drive oh, yeah. and probably yeah. returned the favor. Yeah, I was a lieutenant. <laughs> Very <laughs> much so. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, so did. we get in the car and, and we go down, stare, we go down and we go down to Boney Road. Oh, yeah. And it and it's grown oh up boy. some since then, but it's really it's a long road, and uh, and I'm looking over and I'm thinking back when you know he scared me to tears as a little <laughs> kid, and I said James, this this car's good, it's got good brakes and all. He's like, yeah, yeah, it's it's good, it's good. Yeah, I got zero rated tires and all. It ride, man. So I'm t- I got him talking about <laughs> the engine. Tires. He said, you know, sometimes it run a little hot, you know, if you push it a little bit. I said, okay. I said, but the brakes are good. He's like, yeah, yeah the brakes are good. It's good. About <laughs> That's that time, multiple times. And punched it, and we're going. <laughs> Down Baldy Road, and I could see the stop sign down there at, at, at uh, not New Berlin's at Cedar Point. Yeah, that's Cedar, Cedar Point. Point. Yeah, and ain't nobody a cow pasture yeah. there. On yeah, the other so side. I'm looking ditch yeah. in the cow pasture, and uh, he said, "Hey, hey, 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 the stop sign's coming. The stop sign's coming." <laughs> yeah, I said, "Yeah, I, I said you said the brakes are good. You right? still rolling like, trip digits." Yeah, I'm, I'm, and I'm looking over. I'm, I'm, I'm like, 100, dude, 110, 120 maybe. <laughs> and he he said, uh, "He said, yeah, the brakes are good, but there's a stop sign. There's a stop sign." I said, "Hey, James, what?" You remember when you scared me when I was 13 years old? <laughs> yeah, so payback. Oh, yeah, get right. back on that one there. Yeah. That he did. Love it. It was good. But anyway, yeah. James has got a great story, and uh, I want him to – we're just going to let him start, just kind of talk about it. It's this story of redemption and forgiveness, which I think is important in Christian life. So, yeah. um, and, and and even for me, you know, this, this is a hard one to wrap my head around sometimes, and, and it just means a lot to hear this one. So I, we talked Good. about it, and he's going to talk about it. So he's going to talk about kind of the history and up to this point, and then Bert's going to come in and talk for a little while. Um, yeah, we'll I'll be talking there. about forgiveness of self and God's forgiveness, and Bert's going to be talking about forgiveness of others. And we do this ministry inside the prisons. Right. Yeah, and so, and, uh, you know, that's uh, that's the whole thing of it is is the forgiveness you know, as men, we, you know, we have a we have a tendency to categorize things. You know, it's hot, you know, cold, you know, big, small, and and we do and we do that. We do that with the basic, you know, in all aspects of our life. We we categorize things. You know, first thing you're talking about religious, and I'm, we're not religious. We just love Jesus, but we do. You know, we have testimonies of what God has done for us in our lives. To start this out back in 1984, and it's and it's not a good thing. Like saying you know, we talked about, you know, we laughed about Doug and everything. And I've met Doug, and I really I really like Doug and respect him. But Doug's Doug's life and his path is nothing like mine. Back in 1984, I ended up taking you know a very uh, precious young lady's life, you know Evelyn, and um, the, to which that's when I was listening to y'all. Not too long ago, was Miss Angela Corey, and we were talking about Ed Austin and all. Well, that was the prosecuting attorney, him, Alan Rosner, and Pat McGinnis was the public defender. And uh, I uh, ended up catching 40 years sentence on that. 40 years with three year mandatory. Can you tell us how, how what happened? Um, you don't have to. Just curious. No, I just uh, imm- immature, insecure, mm-hmm. and uh, I lost it. Okay. And. Uh, I'll leave it like that. I don't need to get much in detail. Just the fact is, no, the details is that I did, a, mic I did a 40-year sentence. Yeah, it's a and long time. Was, well, yeah, that's what I was sentenced to. And uh, prison, a lot of people don't realize, but prison's a hate factory. Any of y'all watched that uh, 60 Days In? If not, you, you kind of need to watch it because it's, it really gives you an outlook of what jail life and prison life's like. Is this an animal house? So it's pretty, it's pretty authentic? Very much so. Mm. Very much so. You know, how the people yell and beat and bang and slam all night. Did you ever have to work in a jail? Mm-hmm. I didn't work in a jail. No? no? Okay. I, I remember a couple of times taking some kids, though, that weren't. But I've been in there plenty of times. That yeah. weren't, being, and, and weren't being good kids and walking and them and through the jail. Friends, I had friends that, that worked at that worked the jail. Right. And, you know, Jacob yeah. worked at prison. My son worked at oh, prison. Oh, that's right. Yeah, he, he did. He worked for a little while. He worked Rafer? Mm-hmm. Yeah, up in the oh. Triangle. 
Yeah. I don't know, brothers, to know about the triangle. Been mm. up on he's been worked up on death row and all that kind of stuff too. So that's, yeah. that's a sad place. Any, any kid that's been in trouble, they should probably they, they need a, at least a visit, a walk through, and just say, hey, this is what it's like in here. If you don't have an idea, yeah. I, I don't agree with that. You don't? No. Because any fool knows if you keep acting up, eventually you're going to end up in prison. And you got a good, a good, a pretty well, you know, understanding of what prison life's like. I mean, come on. They do. You know, what you need to do is address why they're doing what they're doing. Hmm. And to me, I think most of that is, for one thing, is the broken families. You know, God designed the family. Mm-hmm. That's why he designed it. And as you know, especially like, you know, you growing up with the way our fathers were, and you know, we were blessed that our fathers were around, but they were very strict. My daddy told you one time, one time only, and that was it. It's kind of like Uncle OJ. Mm. He was he he was a very nice man. I respect him, but he told very you quiet. basically you're very quiet. But he only told you one time, one time only, and you better get to it. Yeah, yeah. Was, because then it comes told, his wrath. Told me one time, it was no counting. Yeah, that was it. I mean, it wasn't no begging, no asking. So I I ended up in the system. And I was a pretty good product in my environment. I did double split workouts. It's funny. I look at Larry now. I don't got soft now, but I did double split workouts. I ran five miles a day. Yeah, and I was like I said, I was a very good product in my environment, and I was full of hate. You know, I remember telling the guys I got into a fight one time with the guys, and uh, I told them I come to prison for fighting and killing. You think I'm fixing to roll over now? Yeah. You know, jump up spitting blood, and they're like, "Oh God, this guy's crazy." And we rolled. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, it's all about survival once you get in here. That it is. Yeah. yeah. That it is. Yeah, it's, not a, it's not a fact if we, you win the fight. Survive. It's just a fact if you got a heart in your fight. Yeah. So I was used to, and growing up with David and I the way we were, I was used to the first one to swing anyway. So let's just get this over with. Yeah, he had to jump on his big brother a lot. So, yeah. You know, seven years difference between us. And a lot of people are ah, that's not a, listen, when you're seven years old and he's 14, there's a whole lot of difference in there. Yeah. But during that time in prison, I got really hard. I mean, I, mean, I really got hard. You know, uh, Larry Larry, and Stephen come visit me some. My brother got where he quit coming to visit me because I was just so so hard, so bitter. And I listen, I didn't blame, you know, the prosecuting attorney and judge, Hudson, all of I didn't blame them. Listen, I did all my of Hudson? Hudson, all of yes, sir, Father Time. Yes, sir. I, uh, you got some I, sentences. I, yeah, I, uh, I deserve to be in there. Mm-hmm. And I, even now, I don't, I don't deserve to be out. I really don't, because I did what I did. A lot of people say, oh, well, no, no, I did what I did. You know, and meant to do it. And it's sad. It's just, that's a fact. So I hated my life. I hated my crime. I hated my time. I was just, and being in, in that environment, it was just, it was fed. You know, every night you say your DC number, you know, your name in D.C. You know, I mean, it's, it's a constant reminder that you're a loser, a failure. You're an inmate. So you think the environment, instead of kind of remediating you, know, it, it just makes you more angry? It, no, it fueled it. It fueled, fueled it. It fueled, it, it fueled it. So, so you weren't really. No. Hmm. So no one or so many people come out of there and end up, well, going, back. A, end up going back. That's the thing. Yeah. You sit there and you treat these guys. The I always tell, I tell a story about a, a little shepherd in the backyard. A little shepherd dog. You go out and every time that dog's on the chain, you go out and kick that dog. Eventually, that dog's gonna bite the crap out you. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And that's the way it is. These guys are in there treated like junk mm-hmm. all day long, and then you know they're, they get out and they're ticked at the world. And you wonder why is he acting like that? Well, I'll tell you why he's acting like that. It's because of the way he's been treated, and he gets where he just don't care. And he's 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 basically a lot of them's done burned all the bridges with their families. They have no no support there. So they just go back to what they know. You know, I laugh about, and th- and this is a good point here, I laugh about where they talk about defund the police. You know, and a lot of people kind of, why do you break it down different ways? But back in my day, and he'll tell you, back in my day, the only thing that halfway kept me straight was the police. Mm. If you would have took that factor out, I'd have kicked your door in and took your junk. Now, which is... Yeah. The way I was, yeah. okay. So I hear these people say this, and I'm like, man, they do not know what they're talking about. Yeah. And you, know, you got that nice car, I want it. Well, that's something that's going to have to be an experiment for a while, and then when people figure out that okay, that really doesn't make sense, it'll probably go. No, it, exactly. Yeah. So during my time, I was about 16 years deep. I had a drug treatment counselor, 
I didn't have a drug. Uh, I had an anger management issue, not not no drugs. I didn't do drugs. I was actually in the Coast Guard. I, had, I was six years in the Coast Guard, so we was doing urinalysis all the time. I drank. Mm. I was just I was just had. I was a hothead. Is a drug? Yeah, it, it, it is a chemical mm. dependence. It is, but it's legalized. So what? I could you know I could drink all I wanted. What do you think? What do you think made you so angry? You said you you had a father. Yeah, he my died dad. young. He died. Eighteen. No, was so he was 18. eighteen. His dad was forty nine. I remember Uncle Brody died. Yeah, that's uh, one of the things that that really ticked me off at God, in which I'll talk about here in a minute. But during that time, like it's about sixteen years deep, I had a drug treatment counselor. He lied on me, and they locked me up in confinement. Well, mm-hmm. now, and I want you to I want you to picture this now. So here I am. I'm in prison in confinement, which is a prison within a prison, and I'm going to kill this guy. I'm going to take an E string off a guitar and I'm going to decapitate him. You're planning it. I mean, oh, yeah. You're, you're, oh, you're I'm back there scheming it. and planning. You, yeah. I gritted my teeth. I, I call it, you know, the story's like hell to heaven in 21 days. So it's a story. But I had gritted my teeth so hard back there that my jaw hurt. And I didn't realize I was reeking with hate so bad that when they would pop, they would roll the door for everybody to get a shower, they do them one at a time. You get a shower. Well, you go down and get a haircut first, then you, you know, get in the shower and take a shower. And they would roll the door. They didn't do that. They made me back up to the food slot and cuff me. They cuffed me. And I didn't get a haircut. And then when they put me in the shower, they rolled a they rolled a gate on the shower, and took the cuffs off so I could shower. I was reeking with hate that bad. I did not realize. You know, it's kind of kind of you know people that smoke cigarettes, nothing personal, but you can smell you know the smoke on them. <laughs> then guys come in my office all the time, and I can tell the ones that 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 smoke and the ones that don't. That don't realize that they have that that smell to them and I didn't realize this yeah I didn't realize I was reeking that bad with hate Mm. I was just I was very yeah I was very volatile but they could see it they could feel it so and I'm back there probably just beat you and they could probably sense it right away yeah oh yeah I told you my brother quit coming and visit me he was praying he basically he actually quit praying for me at that time wow and so and then God you know the Holy Spirit convicted him about it so he started praying for me and he just and his prayer was Lord Turn him any which way but loose. Any which way but loose, Lord. And that was his prayer for me. And so I'm back there, and, I, and I'm contemplating. I'm mean, Like I said, I'm going to get this guy. You did not mess with me and walk around about it, you know, and talk about it. So God started dealing with me at that time. And and then the issue with my father. You know, I cried to dad. Well, my daddy, he, he died of pancreatic cancer, same thing as Uncle Max. Kind of weird. But he was 300 pounds and died, and died in six months, 150 pounds gone. And I'd cry to God all the earnest of my heart that he and I let my father die. And he did. And I was ticked at God. I was mad, you know, that he let my dad die. But what I didn't realize at the time, the Holy Spirit would start purging me. Because the Lord spoke back to me and said, son, he says, I did heal him. I healed him complete and whole. He says, matter of fact, I carried him be home with me in paradise, and I gave him a new body. I thought about that a little bit, and I chewed on it. I said, all right, bet that up. Bet. I said, what about Evelyn? I mean, just on and on, all these issues over the years, as the Holy Spirit would bring him up, we'd thrash him out. I mean, I'm telling you, because I told God, I said, you know, I said, God, you got a good talk game that you love me. John 3, 16. I said, where have you been? I ain't had nothing but hell. Where are you at? I said, that kind of love, I don't need you. Pop your clutch. Get out of my face. And it's the one God didn't smash me like a bug, man. I'm telling you, I was defiant. Very. It was bad. And God started dealing with me at that time. Like I said, I'll be talking on you know, forgiveness itself and God's forgiveness. It's a little easier for me to more to accept God's forgiveness than my own, really. Because like I said, I hated my crime. I And, you know, and I, even today... I'm a little easier talking about it today than usually we talk in churches. And you have all these nice people and all, I mean, really sweet people, right? And here you are, you're this heathen that's up there in the middle of them. And it, it brings you back to reality, though, when I talk about it. You know, what God's done for me in my life. Like I said, I don't deserve to be here. I don't deserve to be out. I don't deserve none of this. It's, it's just by God's did grace. You, did you do the whole 40? I did. I did seven days, like in nineteen years, because of game time. I was on the old system. 
I fell in the room. don't have seven. game time, but we had game time. I had time. game time back then. They took a third off because they overcrowded with uh, Judge Susan Black. It was a whole, whole different story. October of, um, let's see, October, can't remember the years now, it's been so long. 83, they did away with the parole system, went to a point system with game time. Okay. And I fell in November so of 84. About not, almost 20 years. I mean, I, 19 years. Yeah, I like seven days of being 19 years. Gotcha. Yeah. So I'm in there, and I'm in that jail cell in confinement. I'm in there threshing with God, and I said, that's when the Holy Spirit started really, really dealing with me. Hmm. And, and like I said, I, 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 I had to take God at his word in First John 1, 9, it, where it says is that if we confess our sins to God, that he is faithful and just to forgive us of our sins and to cleanse us and deliver us from all unrighteousness. And I'm thinking, like, okay, well, that's good talk. How do you back that up? Well, it goes back to Christ down on the cross where he loved us that much. He loved you that much, Jim, that he let his son die for you on that cross. You don't deserve it, and you don't either. Neither do you. And he uh, forgave none us. of us. Look. But he forgave us. He loved us before. Before we ever knew it. He gave, forgave those criminals on the crosses next to him. Mm -hmm. Right. So and you think about the, the and you think about the thief on the cross. I talk about it when I do ministries. You got one guy that was rebellious, belligerent. Then the other guy finally come to a sense and realized that he was a savior, that he was lost, that he need he needed a savior, and that Christ was the son the son of God, the savior. And he just simply asked him, "Hey, dude, when you're you're in your kingdom, remember me." And Jesus told him, "said Look, bro, said this day you will be with me in paradise." This guy had never been to church, never paid no tithes, no offers. I'm not saying you, you're not supposed to. You're supposed to. That's part of growth as a Christian. But he hadn't done nothing except simply believe in Jesus Christ, who he said he was. And this day you'll be with me in paradise. So I started I started thinking about that, and I'm like, you know, yeah, that's me. That's me. And you do it for that, that brother, he'll do it for me. So I started accepting God at his word. And as I the more I come to realization that God did that God does love me, that He He did all this for me. Start that some of that hate realization, yeah. You started man, the closer I got to well, God, the love started killing that. It, hate. Start, it started killing hate, mm -hmm. and I always thought hate was a stronger force than, than love because I always was it the one that was busting people in the head, right? Then I, I come to realization that love, God is love, and it is a stronger, stronger force than hate. And the closer I got to God, the more healing he brought to my heart. And it was easier for me at that time to accept myself and accept my crime and what I had done. Mm. And did, did, I, this occurred mm. while you were in, I was in, in prison? I was in confinement. It That's was in said, 21 hell, hell days. Heaven 21 held to heaven in 21 days. Wow. I was locked up in a box. Yeah. Sitting there. Somebody. In, in my underwear in, yeah. a, in a hot jail cell. Just God and me. Some. Somebody noticed a change in you, probably, and that probably helped contribute to you getting out early. It's I like did, this I guy, this guy. Well, has I didn't get out early. I did my time. Okay. I did my time. I got you. I mean, everybody said, well, you were sentenced to 40 years. That's why they did 40 years, because they could do the calculations with 20 days a month work gain time. You know, see. Okay. they knew how much time I was going to do. They figured I would do about 20. That was the goal for me to do 20, but I'd done really, I really excelled inside the prison. You know, God has blessed me. I'm very gifted. I can do a lot of things. Come to find out I'm a pretty good cook. And funny story, they put me in the kitchen. I didn't like it. I didn't realize at the time they didn't turn the, they didn't turn the fox loose in the hen house. I had all the food. <laughs> I cook it all. I do it all it. I wanted. Yeah. <laughs> I ended up getting, being a certified uh, chef at the University of South Florida while I was in there. Yeah. That's a funny story. That is. I didn't know that. Yeah. 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 So, but you did like to eat. Oh, I like to eat. That was my thing. I didn't. I don't. I don't smoke. And even today, I don't drink, smoke, do no drugs or nothing. But I will knock you down going to Burger King. Don't get in my way. <laughs> you know. Uh -huh. So, but God started healing my heart at that time, and and from there, it's just it's just been a progress process, uh, from one thing to the next. And I see His hand, you know, all in my life, and. Uh, night before last, I wake up in the middle of the night and look at my phone. It's one eleven. But I, I, I actually like to live by Deuteronomy one eleven, which is the bless, a blessing, the one uh, one eleven blessing. Hmm. And you have to look it up, and I'm going to tell you about it. 
Deuteronomy 111. I, I, I can't recite a lot of Bible verses, it's, but I know what John 3.16 is. My mom can recite yeah. most yeah. of the Bible. Well, you can play this back later, Yeah, and you can get it. I'll remember that. I'll Deuteronomy, Deuteronomy, Deuteronomy 111. Yeah, yeah. yeah. and my favorite. looking it up right yeah, now. Yeah, my favorite. Do my, what? Deuteronomy 111. I can. Yeah, and my favorite verse is Psalms 37.4. Delight yourself in the Lord, and he'll give you desires of your heart. And God's been good to me. I got, I've got... Uh, I actually, uh, when I got out, I prayed to God to entrust me with another one of his daughters, and he did. He blessed me with a beautiful wife. Yep. And, um, I mean, in my family, he restored my family. He's just, he is a master at bringing healing and restoration. Turned your life around. He turned my life around, okay. which that leads to another chapter. Um, you know, I'm talking all about myself, but I have, I have, you know, a brother here. Like I said, we do this in, in, in inside the prison. And he's going to be talking. Bert Baker's going to talk about forgiveness of others. That's not my forte. I'm, I'm all mine's. I hate to say it, but all all mine is, is forgiveness of self and God's forgiveness. Me dealing well, with me and dealing with God. That's how, with yeah, yourself. it does. And so I was able to forgive myself. But you know, when you start getting further into forgiveness, then it goes into forgiveness of others. Because if you look up in the Bible, or the, the uh, Lord's Prayer. And you get into the, the everybody, you know they finish they finish it off, but they forget two two of the verses after that, where it talks about you know if you forgive others, God will forgive you. But if you don't forgive others, God won't forgive you. So and that's where Burke comes in forgiveness of other people. Yeah. So if I'd like to, uh, I'd like to introduce yeah. uh, Burt Baker. Yeah, Burt, Burt, come on up. Come on, wake up, Burt. He was I, dozing over there, I think. <laughs> Just lean up close to the mic. That thing's sensitive. You don't look like you'll have trouble speaking into that thing at all. No, no. Not I like that. I like that beard, by the way. Oh, thank you. Yeah, yeah. I got made fun of mine because I shortened mine up today, but I had to go to the doctor, so I, I'm growing it back out. It's gonna make too much fun of me right now. Okay. Me. So, uh, so yeah, you, James talks about God's forgiveness, forgiveness of yourself, and uh, with me, it was a kind of a different thing. I was. I was born uh, the oldest of three children to a uh, Methodist minister. And uh, so now some people, if you think about it, you know the the old saying about the preacher's kid. Oh, yeah. Worse well, <laughs> yeah, well, the well, police officer's kid, too. Yeah. Yeah. Police so I, the preacher's kid. So yeah. I, figured that I figured I'd try to live up to it. Yeah. <laughs> so I, I did. And, uh, but me and, my, me and my sister, Vera, um, we, there's only two years between us. I was the oldest. And, uh, so we moved all over Florida, bounced around little towns. And, um, uh, so, but she was, I was always very protective of her, you know, and I made sure nothing happened to her. And, uh, so then, but as we got older, nine years later, my little brother was born. Well, so now there's this, this kid to take care of and, so by the time I turned 15, 16 years old, my sister can take care of my little brother and I'm out, I'm out the door. And uh, so I moved away from home. Uh, I started a uh, career as electrician, 1975. And uh, so I've been an electrician for 45 years. But, um, but anyway, so I, uh, I moved out, kind of moved out, left my sister taking care of my brother and and we kind of went our separate ways. Well, about two years later, I went out to New Orleans and I worked on oil rigs and uh, had a pretty good time doing that. But, you know, of course, we talk, we talk about um, our, some of our past and we don't go too deep into it. But I mean, I spent two solid years in New Orleans, Louisiana. Yeah. And, uh, you know, and I, and I was 18 years yeah. old. <laughs> so I found every bit of what they talk about, about that city. Right. So anyway, while I'm out there, my sister calls me and she says, look, I'm going to get married. And, um, she says, I want you, I'm going to have daddy do the the ceremony, so I want you to be take me down the aisle. I said, "Well, I can do that." So I came back to Jacksonville, and um, I meet this guy that she's going to marry, and uh, I didn't like him straight off the bat, and uh, to the point that right before my sister's wedding, my dad comes to me and he said, "Today is your sister's day." 
and you better behave your ass. And I said, okay. So I behaved, and they got married, and I went back to New Orleans and all my fun. So that that went on uh, for a couple more years. Well, about three years later, I guess, um, she gives me a call, and she says, uh, Bert, I want to get a divorce. She says he beats on me, does things like this, and I'm just, I just, you know, I got to I gotta go. I said, well, I can help you do that, too. So I came back to Jacksonville, and um, this time I moved back to Jacksonville and because uh, I was having, having a little harder time working offshore. They were starting to make sure that it was just the people in Louisiana. So I come back, and uh, sure enough, I go see her, and she shows me the bruises and everything. And uh, so I said, okay. So I grabbed a baseball bat and I grabbed a shotgun. And I figured, you know, whichever device I needed, I was going to be ready for both. And I went to her, her trailer and I set up camp. Well, I smoked at the time. And so I would cut my cigarette so you couldn't see the fire on the cigarette, you know. And I put me a case of beer in the refrigerator and I put a blanket over the refrigerator so that you couldn't see the light on inside the refrigerator. Sounds like a, sounds like a guaranteed arrest plan. Yeah. <laughs> guaranteed yeah. get your arrested plan. Yeah, so anyway, so I'm, I'm sitting there in the, in the dark. Now, at this point, normally what I bring up to the guys inside the prison, I said, is, is, is y'all just missed a major point. I was so mad and so angry. Anger had taken over my body to the point that I'm an electrician. You'd think that electrician would just take the light bulb out of the refrigerator, right? Yeah, but yeah. but no, no, I'm I, you know. So anyway, so I'm sitting there. Well, nothing ever happened that night, right? And nothing ever happened the next night. And she went back to work, and I went back to my place. About three days later, my dad calls me, and he says, "Bert, he says your sister's been killed. She's been shot. She's been shot six times." And they're trying to find the guy who did it. And um, they, um, so anyway, at that point, same as James, I was very pissed off at God. I actually went out into the driveway of the place I was staying, and my buddy comes out and he stopped me from just beating my head on the concrete. I don't remember doing it, but it happened. And so then I was, I was mad at myself because I didn't stick around a couple more days and protect her even more. You know, I was mad at God because he let it happen. I was mad at the guy because he did it. I mean, you know, I'm pissed off at everybody. Well, this started a, a pattern for about the next 17 years. And, you know, I was, I was brought up a preacher's kid. I mean, you know, yeah, I did some crazy stuff, but I was brought up right, and I was, I was kind and nice and all that kind of stuff, but that was out the window. And so, you know, just don't, don't push your shopping cart in front of me in Publix because right. I'm taking you out. You know I mean? Yeah, it's yeah. just, you know, it just, the, any little thing is going to set me Easily off. Easily angered. Yes. Irascible, ready, ready to go anytime. Ready to go at any time, and I can and I could just— And you're a big dude. And I could justify yeah. Yeah. why. Mm -hmm. You know, I've got I've got the right to be mad, and I'm right to do that to you. Absolutely. And uh, so anyway, this went on. Well, I met a girl. I got married. And I thought, well, you know, hey, being married might calm me down a little bit. And uh, so in the meantime, though, I didn't even think about the things like um, I went and got an ATM card. Okay, when you get your ATM card, they ask you to put down a, a code a that you can remember. Right. Well, my code that I could remember was his release date. And so every time I, I got it. every time I got money out of the bank, I'm punching that number. I'm getting pissed again. I'm getting pissed oh, again. Oh yeah. yeah. And it's, it's constant just a reminder. Constant reminder and I'm just getting fueled again, fueled again. Well, daddy taught me to never hit a girl. And uh, so the next thing you know, being mad turned into punch a hole in the wall. That didn't hurt nobody. I worked construction. The guys taught me how to patch drywall. I punch a hole in the wall. 
I patch it. I paint it. Good as new. Good as new. And I didn't see a problem with that. And so that would happen all the time. Well, um, all of a sudden, my parents came to me and said, we got a we got a letter and he's asking for our forgiveness. Well, I did kind of, to back up just a little bit, three years after that was happened, my mother forgave this guy. And you're like, hell no. Uh-uh. And, I, and, and that's just ignorant. Well, she had to, she was probably angry too and had to let go of that anger somehow herself. And that was the only way to do it is through forgiveness. Yes. Well, then my father, he's a pastor. You know, I'm kind of leaning on the fact that, hey, you know, the pastor's still not. Right, it's pastor hadn't. Okay, but he was starting to lose control of his, his church. He was, you know, it was really affecting him. So finally he says, I forgive him. After about seven years, I'm not on board. Yeah. Then he took it back. I said, okay, there we go. That's what I'm talking about. But then after that, um, he... Uh, he said that James was talking about the crucifixion and all that kind of stuff. He, he said when Jesus was on that cross, he said, Father, forgive them for they know not what they do. And he said, I'm tired of being mad. And he says, I forgive him. And he forgave him. Well, now they show me this letter and they said, Bert, you know, he's asking for our forgiveness and we've gave it to him. I looked at the letter. I said, my name wasn't on there. <laughs> you know, I mean, he wasn't talking to me. But the Lord had been working on me. I had finally, I had went back to church, and, and God was dealing with me in his own way. And uh, so I started reading it. And um, I'm a slow reader. And I saw, you know, it was about six, seven pages long, and I'm reading this letter. And uh, I think I see my wife. You know, she kind of shuts the door on the china cabinet, and and my mom moves the vase off the middle of the table. You know, they figure the more I'm, the more I'm having to look at this paper, and I think my son went and got the mud pan because you know he's waiting yeah. for a hole in the wall. They're getting ready to burp yeah, the house. Yeah, that's right. So they got to, they got to get ready. Yeah. But the opposite happened. It's just God convicted me at that minute. And I ran outside, and here I was in the driveway again. But this time, instead of beating my head on the ground, I was looking up, and I said, Lord, I forgive him. Hmm. I said, I forgive him. And I said, but now there's— That's a hard concept. But, there, you know, but at that point, I'm thinking, okay, look. What's that anger done to you? That's a cancer answer. It just eats yeah. from the inside out. But, it's, but I'm saying, okay, I forgive him. And that's what the Bible's asking me what, to do. Was it conditional, though? It was conditional. Yeah. I'm not going to eat with him. I'm not going to, you know, I mean, hey, he's over here. I forgive him. That's the end of it. Yeah. And um, so anyway, I started, I started, I was going to Bible study, this, that, and the other. And like James said, they taught me to... To understand a verse, you read a couple verses ahead of it and a couple after it, so you get the whole concept. And um, I was reading the, the Lord's Prayer. And those two verses after the Lord's Prayer says that if you forgive, you know, I forgive you in heaven. But if you if you don't, I don't forgive you. And I'm saying, my, I better think a little more about that. better be serious about this forgiveness thing. I started doing prison ministry. And I'm doing prison ministry, and uh, this guy comes to me and he says, uh, "He says, Bert, he says, uh, there's a there's a guy walking around trying to get people for his team that's going to go into the prison, and they're getting ready to come ask you." Well, it's happened several times before. I've, I do this, and they go, "No, no, no, Bert, you don't understand." Your ex brother in law is going to be there, and I'm like, you know, okay, God's God's pushing me to the fire. Mm -hmm. He yeah. wants to test, know. Test. Yeah. Test. And um, so I said, I said, well, I'm not going to do, I'm not going to do this, Kairos. And my lovely wife is standing right there next to me, and she says, you know, you got to do this. And I mean, you know, I'm. It's it's enough that. 
if it's enough that God's trying to make me do all this stuff and be right, you know, but then your wife's got to get messing right, in his yeah. business. So I said, okay, so I'm going to do it. So we got ready to, uh, we got ready to have this Kairos and, uh, they went and, and I, they had us, had me waiting out in the parking lot with this other guy and we were waiting for him to show up. And, uh, I never noticed it till afterwards, you know, but they, making me stay out in the parking lot mm -hmm. you know and they're all watching through the windows and they're waiting to see what happened right. but god god was faithful and he showed up and uh all i could do was tell him that it had been a long time coming and that i forgave him you know and 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 the punchline is is then we went inside and we ate together that you wasn't gonna do that i wasn't gonna do and uh you know so so then it just seemed like god keeps putting these things for me to do fast forward quite a few years and now i've been doing ministry with my ex-brother-in-law and they went and got ready to make the sleeping arrangements when we go like go down to uh, Palatka to Putnam County right. and they two to a room and this and that all of a sudden the guy doing that work he comes running up to me and he says Bert I'm so sorry he said but I made I wasn't even thinking and I've got you rooming with your brother-in-law and I, <laughs> and, but but God's but, just keep but now but now I'm just like God you know now I kind of I do laugh about it a little right. more because I'm like God what are you what are you doing to He's me just confirming yeah I still feel that way and so so anyway so we we room together well I wake up you know I'm I'm 63 years old I wake up to go to the bathroom in the middle of the night and uh, there he is he's laying in bed. He's got the pillow over his head. You know, and that little that little guy on my shoulder says, Bert, it's right there. It's real easy, man. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but but you know, praise God, nothing happened. Yeah. <laughs> nothing happened. But so anyway, um what we do though is um we kinda uh, James talks about forgiveness of self and and with uh, killing Evelyn and I talk about the killing of my sister Vera yeah. and uh, but the bottom line like like Stone Cold says the bottom line is my sister's name is Vera Evelyn Baker and this is my ex-brother-in-law right here hey. bless your brother so Amen. wow I didn't see that coming. That's in your face forgiveness. I didn't, how do I not see that coming? Yeah. So, and I guarantee you that in the past, James, you know, I don't know about your your listening audience or whatever, but I mean, James would kick your ass at any drop of the hat. Well, you know, I was sitting here looking at y'all, and, and I didn't say anything, but I was like, seeing you guys on the street, most people wouldn't think that but it's two dangerous men right here yeah i mean y'all probably no, still I, at your I, age mop, mop the floor with about well, half the people funny, out there it's funny now because with me in church <laughs> he said that he's uh, he's just an old teddy bear now i'm like man y'all running my image <laughs> but it's the same with it's the same with bert you know I, I, you don't mind me saying but nah. one of the first times i met him he's sitting there snorting a line of coke and got a pistol hanging out his belt you know i'm like oh this guy now we're gonna get along <laughs> real good i mean you got gas and fire here you know <laughs> i'm serious so but uh a lot of people as i had said you categorize things things are too big and most people in a carnal mind would say that that there's no way that that can happen. You struggled with it. You oh, made it. I promise you. That that my career, there's no way I can do that. There's no way. And I got, and I got news for you. You can't. No. Not without above, you know, above, God's help. Yeah. You, it, need it that, takes, you need that added God's extra power. love in your yeah. heart to be able to do that. Mm -hmm. And that's what Bert done. And that his his family. I've, I've, I've sat. I've ate Thanksgiving dinner with Bert's you know, mom and dad. 
uh, Bert and I, we on uh, Father's, Day, Father's Day, flipping burgers, swimming in his swimming pool, hanging out. You would think we were just best friends, and we are. We're brothers in Christ now, and that's why. It's mm-hmm. through Jesus Christ. And uh, like I said, you, you categorize things as too big. The carnal man would say that's un- impossible to do. But with God, all things are possible. And, you know, the people that are looking at us, you remember our faces because it's in-your-face proof that God can do it. Yeah, I, I can tell you that, uh, as James said, I struggle with it. And, and, and I remember when it happened because I was a, uh, a junior in high school when you went away. And I remember years later going to see you and, and you know, hearing the stories. I remember the one guy, you, you ran across the yard, the guys were running their mouth, and he, like, jumped, and you, your butt landed on his chest, and you just pounded him out. But you were always like that, and you told a story about pulling the knife or pulling the gun on the guy in the bar yeah. that one time, and you always was ready for something like that. And you could look at Burton and just see that hardness, too. Yeah, it was and, I, and even though I had the career in law enforcement, there's been times in my life, and I don't know if it's genetic or something, but there's a couple of hard times in my life where I got angry over some things and, and things that really didn't matter in the big, greater scheme of life. Right. But once in a while, things happen in your life that teach you some valuable lessons. And when when I heard this story before you ever told me when y'all first got together and they said he, I said, you know, the first thing out of my mouth, I was like, no, come on now. I, 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 I mean, that's my cousin. I love him. I'll defend him to my death. But that's a hard concept to cover. But I'll tell yeah. you what. Looking back on my life and and understanding how important forgiveness is, and knowing that you you served and then he he served time the same way you did Yo, with all that prison. hate in his all mm-hmm. that hate in his heart, mm-hmm. um, it, I, I won't get emotional, but that's man that that reaches people. You know that's our, that's a hard concept. That's the real deal. And, uh, yeah. Now Christianity will make you yeah. will weaken <laughs> you, boy. Yeah. yeah. It'll yeah, humble well, you. Yeah. So humble you. Yeah. That's an amazing story, though. Yeah. yeah. Well, it's. Uh, yeah, you Jim, know, I'm Jim's quiet. Back. Jim's yeah. quiet. Jim's not <laughs> talking. Yeah, he's not talking. Oh, he's yeah. uh. We, well, yeah. you got you know, me. You got me. We I talked. Know. We talked about the, you know, how God kept pushing me, kept pushing me, different times, and it kind of gives me a, a perspective on, on if you're if you're going to make a decision between good and bad, Christ and the devil, whatever, okay. The devil's so stupid. <laughs> I mean, who are you gonna follow? You know, the stupid guy. We did a church down in 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 Titusville, and it was me and James and my dad and the pastor, and we were in the library, and we're at the church. You know, I don't know. Some people might think it, the devil don't go to church, but anyway, we're sitting there and we're we're huddling up. And we're holding hands and we're going to pray before we go into right. the church and talk. And James was was uh, on my left, on your left, right here, on my left. Okay, and we grabbed hands. And the minute we grabbed hands, the devil told me he said he said, "Bert, you're holding the hand that shot your sister." And I just smiled and I said, that's right. And this is my brother in Christ and you can get the hell out of here. You know, and it was just, but it was just in the church. The devil continues to try to All the time. tell me yeah. that, tell me that what I did was yeah. not, you know, and people, the, the it's prisoners, it's always going to be there. The prisoners hit me up all the time. They go, okay, bur- you know, all crap aside. Yeah. Tell me the truth. And uh, you know, can yeah. d- have you? Do you really, really forgive can. him? Yeah. How, can, can you do that? I said no. No, you can't. You're right. I said no, I can't. Exactly. But with Jesus Christ in my heart, I can. I said, but no, I can't. And I never could. And it was just the more that God got in my life that made me see that yes, I could with His help. And uh, and so I used to think. Why? You know, you think those those negative things about my sister was killed. Yes, she was. But I think about that the doors that God has opened up and the tens of thousands of people that he and I have ministered to yeah. that have heard to me. what we've talked about about thanks uh, you know about forgiveness. And the lives changed. And and it's just it's just she gave you know it was not a sacrifice you know god used what happened 
t- t- totally to his good. Absolutely. He's a, he took yeah. an act of evil. He, yeah, he's a master that now turns something so to bad, yeah. turn, turn it to good. Yeah. Minister towards you know, and, and he, like I say, he's and all the wives you guys have probably changed and influenced because that had to happen. She was like a sacrifice. Maybe that was that was. You know the guys. The guys, God's the guys inside yeah. deal with yeah. reality. Well, he took. I don't they're, know. They're, was, they're very I serious. Plan, but I think he took an instance of of evil coming in and taking over a situation. Yeah. And he said, "Fine, we're, we're, we're take evil. I'm going to I'm going to make make this." Well, the happen. thing, what it was, is it was a, it, the whole thing was attacked on Mister Baker. To shut down his ministry, the man was very, very good. He was a, a precious minister, and and Satan was shutting down his ministry. But God turned this thing to be even stronger because we've all gone in with Mr. Baker. We've gone in and ministered to the inmates. We've been on the 700 Club. What year was uh, the paper? Paul Pinkham has wrote a couple of articles on yeah. us, and it's been hey, every time he's like, every time I write about y'all, you know. Like how do he put it? I want to say goes through the roof, but he's gotten awards on everything. And uh, 2007 Thanksgiving, I'll take that one. <laughs> yeah, well, he loves talking about yeah. this. this is good. Well, and this is this is from a brother down here at the end yeah. of the table. They Paul Pinkham did this article on us, and it was one of the first. Like I said, my father talking about. Father, forgive them, for they know what the, what they do. He put that in the paper, and at that time, the Times Union wouldn't print scripture, and they let it go through. Twenty years, wow. they let they it go through. Go through. They let go but through. anyway, um, like I was kidding with him earlier, you know, I'm a big Florida State fan, and he's a Gator fan. Well, back then, 2007. That's all you got to do is say 2007. <laughs> Tim Tebow was just the man. Yeah. Tim Tebow was the man. Yeah. So they took a picture of me and James and my dad. And they were talking about the story of forgiveness. And so he said they were going to put it out Thanksgiving weekend. Well, the game, the Florida Florida State game is always Thanksgiving weekend. Right. Okay. And Florida had beat the crap out of us. <laughs> And so I go out to get the newspaper, and I'm thinking we're probably going to be third page, metro section, something like that, right? Okay, I open up the paper, and our picture is this big on the front page, and Tim Tebow's picture's up there about this big. It was small. Little thing. Wow. <laughs> And, oh, got copies of that. Yeah. yeah. Oh, I've got a, I've got a framed copy. Framed. Framed. Yeah. 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 Guys, that's a crawfish. That's a very impactful story. Um, one of the best I think we've heard in here yet. Wow. Good job. You're welcome. Well, it's a story of what God can Good do. Good job. Yeah, and that's, I said, and that, I, that, I, that's, that's why I said just keep quiet. There's, a, you know, we'll go and there'll be some information at the end. It'll kind of reveal a lot. And yeah. I don't think he understood what I was saying until now. Uh, uh, Crawfish, I don't know. He, he, he didn't. I don't know if he knew it all either. But um, you told me. Yeah, yeah. that was a while back. That was a okay. While back. okay, but I knew Jim didn't know. Um, so I was a zinger. That was a zinger, mm. and that's that's the kind of human interest story that, that yeah. we like to do here. I, you know, I get into politics stuff, but this kind of stuff. I mean, it ministers to me um, when I get around. You know, people of leadership. The guy was on. You know, earlier today that had that. You know, and, and talked about surviving and 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 y'all teaching me even consider my career and. And uh, going through life and having some hard times because I've had some hate, and some bitterness, you know, a few times in my life over this, over that, or the other, and 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 could have went, could have, you know, it, on a second's notice, because something could have went in, and you know, I used to fight a lot. I mean, get into a oh, lot no. of stuff, and um, <laughs> there's the separation between me and prison a couple of times. You know, all it takes is one bad decision, right. one instance of one bad decision to end up. Yeah. Turning that over and, and then Change your you ought to take that whole life one because second. you only get really one on this earth, and what y'all have done to to minister and to, and to go forth and and to teach God's forgiveness. I mean that's that's a concept that the, you know young men need to hear. I mean you know God's taking this thing and ran with it. It's been on the seven hundred club, yeah, and it's so. funny you, you can YouTube it and you see it, that somebody's broke it down into different languages, and oh, you nice. yeah you hear it and you're like oh, okay it's weird, but. Yeah, God has done a lot with it. And also, I mean, while we're still, you know, on the air, is, you know, Bert and I, listen, we go wherever God opens up the door, you know, 
and uh, we bring the ministry in of forgiveness. We've taught uh, United Methodist out there at the beaches. At the beaches, United Methodist. Mm-hmm. I mean, it was I've thousands, beaches, thousands yeah. of people beaches there, there, and. And we've spoke at a little church with seven people. Mm-hmm. We go wherever God opens up the door, man. Y'all been to 1122? Uh, that was before 1122. Joe, 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 Joe came from Beaches. He was at yeah. Beaches when we went to Beaches. I got you. Okay. Yes, I'm yes. surprised there, he hasn't had you at 1122 because that, that's just... You'd have they people, did, you'd they have did people a thing that had shoes everywhere, remember? They had to get the remember? space in between or different places because people don't... Unless they're looking it up, they don't think nothing about it, and then they go and you, you hear that story, right. and then you yeah. put it together, and then you're, like, you're just blown away. Yeah, yeah. and that's the reason like I didn't want Larry telling you, Jim. I wanted you to to, to yeah. feel the impact of them because it it really is it's it's in your face forgiveness. Yeah, you, know, you fix your mouth to say anything, right? Yeah. Well, I can show you. I can actually show it, and and um, it's right here. Yeah. Because it, I don't deserve that. It, this, I don't deserve this forgiveness. It. Looking at you two guys, a couple of tough. Hard ass, bad asses over here. I can tell you guys love each other. Yeah, that's it, that. you do. Wait, a little story about that. Yeah. Um, we had a, we was on. I'm not going to name the, the religion. We was on a radio channel, and the guy was kind of pressing me for some details about the crime. Right? Bert speaks up and says that basically that's enough of that. We're not going there. Yeah. Yeah, he takes up for me, man. I'm serious. And I'm glad, like, yeah, and, and I'm yeah, glad that's you my did, brother, now, man. Now, <laughs> And I'm glad you did because I asked you about that earlier. We're like, that's not that's irrelevant. It's not important because that that, well, that, that, might, him, that might have just you heard him talk about the hotel room, yeah. right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. I had prayed about it. I knew Bert was gonna for me. We had a um, a new friend that told me Bert's gonna blow my brains out when I get out. He, so he had been tipped that. off. I already, already knew about it. Sat there for three. And days. I had thought, listen, I had already thought about yeah. it, and I knew I had and this is something that we don't get. I don't know how much more time we got. No, we're over, but that's fine. No, you got. <laughs> you got. He said we got time. Okay. Okay, right. but anyway. <laughs> what Bert didn't know is I knew he was gunning for me and with the DOC they're slow and they're behind and I knew I basically had a 20 to a 30 day window ahead of him and I know all the rednecks out in Ocean Way got guns and stuff in their trucks at the bar so I just go bust the window out and go get my piece and I knew I had to jump on him but when God changed my heart and I'm like okay Lord you said bring all our cares to you I said Lord you know Bert's gunning for me he's already said he's going to kill me I said Lord I give it to you. It ain't pretty, but I'm giving this to you. And if Bert kills me, my blood's on your hands. You deal with it. I'm over it. The and pinnacle for evil would have been both of y'all. Oh yeah, shooting and killing each other and and, and right. the, yeah. yeah, the devil. Right. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Well, the the, won. the things that I like, I said it just. This was 1984, and yeah. then um, I guess when we finally come around to each other was 07. Yeah, somewhere around uh, 07 uh, but all this stuff right. keeps happening all this stuff yeah. keeps happening that just reiterate different things when I finally got to the point that I was praising God for what had happened because of what was going on and God God kind of made it apparent to me that you don't think I would I knew what I was doing yeah. said yeah. James as I said in the beginning, James shot her six times and then turned the gun on himself. Story wouldn't have been there. Nope. Story wouldn't have been there. <laughs> Lives wouldn't have been changed. No. God God said, you know, when this thing started, when it started, then God said, okay, well, if I'm going to have to take, take over this, this is my perception. You know, if I'm going to take over this, he's got to use all six because I can't let him turn it on himself. So and there's many, many, many aspects of when we look at the things and we see God's hand in it. Oh. We see God's hand. We we've seen many, many a soul saved, many lives changed, people That's delivered. Because the, the thing out. is, a lot of people saw oh, it's sad that you know that she was in prison. Well, they don't consider that Bert. You mentioned it though. They didn't consider Bert being in prison because he was in a hate field prison too. It just he didn't have his prison didn't have bars. See? Mm. He was doing time too. Saying God delivered us both. That he did, and that's the reason I said, you know, we're, 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 we're yeah, we're not religious. We just love no, Jesus, and we have a testimony. I can't stand religion. I, I can't stand right. either. No, that's that's a that's a spiritual. And that's the reason, you know, uh, we 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 deal with more or less the hardened people because we we that's where we come from. That's where God delivers, you know, from and through. You got you guys have probably fulfilled your purpose here on this earth, and a lot of people don't do that. But that's pretty significant. I'm like, you 
that's happened. And now the people that you're touching, the people you thank you, the people you're touching. Now that's that, that's more than a lot of people accomplish in a whole lifetime. But it gives you a, to a be able to have that impact. On yeah, that. it gives you a different perspective on life. Even Bert, when he does more of his testimony, he talks about his son not taking the trash out, and he gets ticked off at his son, mm-hmm. right? But he can forgive James yeah. for killing his sister, but he can't forgive you know his son for not taking the trash out, and it makes all of our all, a lot of people's issues and things that they're going through very minute petty mm-hmm. small mm-hmm. puts everything so in, everything in the perspective yes puts yeah, it in the perspective real yeah. fast <laughs> real quick like thank you yeah. both yeah thank you. james appreciate leggett you know, and burt baker long time and i always want to meet you so i appreciate you coming it means yeah. a lot. and i'm sure everybody out there will appreciate this this yeah like james said anytime anytime the door opens we go yeah. and you know it just uh, there's people we know that have that have moved away, and we we always laugh about. We hope that that they'll call us. You know, like I got a friend that moved to Montana. You know, give us a call, man. We'll yeah. be there. Yeah. But I got for some reason God's putting it on my mind that the different people that we've run into over the years. We were doing a Kairos in Putnam, and there was a guy. And I can't even, re- I think his name was Jim, but they called him 6'9", because he was 6'9". Wow. And he had tattoos everywhere. He was an enforcer for the Aryan Nation. And he listened to the story, and you could tell it was working on him, but he's just too big and bad. You know, he wasn't going to let it happen. And... um so, like you said, I mean, I'm I'm a fairly good sized guy, but all of a sudden I was walking down the hall and he pulls me into a room that nobody's in, and here I am standing there looking up at this guy, and he was one of the people too that said, "Okay, all crap aside, yeah, I want to know," and God told me right then, He said, "Bert, the only way that six nine is going to do anything is you're going to have to just punch him in the face." <laughs> And I mean, I didn't literally, but but I went and I just I pushed him against the wall, and I said, "Get off the fence." And I used a couple explicit because I knew that's how to talk to him. Yeah, yeah. I said, "Get off the fence." You think you're so big and bad? You know God's talking to you, and this kid melted. broke. He melted, started crying, and just hugged on. He just fell down on me and accepted Christ. Yep, that's outstanding. And and here he was, you know, he was, he, you know, no telling how many people, we didn't know, we don't never talk about that kind of stuff. No telling how many people he had killed, you know, being this enforcer, and God reached right down in there, and and so it was just, it, it's just well, one of those things. It, yeah. Redemption is something. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Appreciate y'all having us. Thank y'all. Yeah, yeah we no, we appreciate. Yeah, we're, you guys we guys. appreciate Jim, you. Got y'all. a lot of stuff to say now. <laughs> uh, I'm pretty speechless. Okay, so, all right. <laughs> that's it. All right, we'll wrap it. <laughs> Burt we'll Bert Baker, <laughs> James Leggett. Thank y'all. Could be one of my favorites. One of my favorite oh. shows for a while because I've, I've like I've got like ten people in my head that I want to say you need to watch a show when it comes out. Yeah. So thank you, thank you, Larry, for bringing these guys yes, here. Sir. So all right, that's a wrap that's for a wrap. Uh, Real Jacks with Jim, Larry. And Crawfish, Burt Baker, appreciate it. James Leggett, appreciate it. Thanks for watching. Thanks for listening. We'll see you next time. Thank you all.